ready? Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us, sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. If you guys do not know, Monique and her daddy, Zaddy, they decided to like basically post receipts showing you know their conversation with their son and it was very confusing to me i didn't understand like why she would post receipts of their conversations so i'm thinking okay these receipts were from you know maybe three four months ago you know maybe he was begging for money these receipts are like from three years ago and i'm just like what is going on monique and zaddy like like what what is the deal so i'm gonna go ahead we're gonna read some of these you know her so-called receipts we're gonna go ahead and read them so let me go ahead and share my screen real quick here. All right. Miss Monique, honey. Let me see if I can come in a little bit closer. Okay. Because some of y'all be like, you're too far. And then other people are like, get off the screen. So I don't know. I'm just going to do half and half. All right. So uh, Monique uh, posted this. This is from January 25th, 2021. Says, hey, now I see you. And then he says, say, hey, baby, you look good. I will call you tomorrow. I'm going to bed, LOL. Your mama getting older. He says, LOL, love y'all. Uh, then a few days later, he says, hey, sweetness. I hit you. I'll hit you later tonight. He says, okay. And then she says, hey, my baby. I'm going to call you when I get back home. We out. Talk to you tomorrow. Then he says, hey, mommy, I wanted to send stuff some flowers and stuff just because can you help me pick out stuff because i have no idea what i'm doing uh she says hey my baby of course i will give me a couple of hours to call then this is the 22nd he says hey ma have you ever heard of hydro hydro i don't know what this is hyperdrolysis it's an excessive sweating disorder then she says hey my baby no i never heard of it i will research it then she says, hey, baby, sorry I missed your call. Can we talk tomorrow? Call me when you go on break if you can. Love you. Then that's a picture of him, I guess, in the bathroom. And she says, you look so handsome. You better say that shit. Let me know when your break starts. Then this is like in March. Hey, baby, how are you today? I'm okay. Been overwhelmed these past couple days working through it. Talking with Nicole, this hasn't been the best sales week so far. I've been feeling more anxious than usual. Nicole has been helping me chill, though. Sometimes she's the reason for my stress, LOL. Then writes, hey, my baby, let's talk when you get off. Then he says, can you call me in 30 minutes? She says, hey, my baby, give me an hour. That's cool. And then the next day, hey, my baby, you up. What is this, hey, my baby? I'm sorry. I just feel like a, hey, my baby, like just... I don't know, maybe, I, maybe parents talk like that to their kids. Maybe, I don't know, I just, I've never written, hey, my baby, over and over again to my boys. I don't know, this is weird to me. Hey, my baby. <laughs> sorry. Maybe y'all talk to y'all's kids like that. I'm sorry, it's just weird. Okay, next. Uh, hey, my baby, please know you still sleep. However, when you wake up, I want you to have an awesome day. He says, yes, ma'am. How y'all doing this morning? She says, amazing. My appointment with the DMV is on May 7th. So I can start this process for my license. I have three derogatory strikes on my credit. I will clear up two of them at the end of the week. Just telling you my to-do list. She says, I know you will get it done. Let's go. <sighs> That's so annoying. Then says, Jamaica, how y'all doing? We're doing good. Cooking late dinner, salmon, salad, and rice. The doctor's appointment went well. We met with one of the midwives. Then she says, oh, wonderful, my baby. Did you hear my baby's heartbeat again? <laughs> my baby's um, heartbeat again. Remember Jamaica? He says, yes, mom, of course. I remember Mr. Jamaica. How was he doing? And the baby's heartbeat is strong. We forgot to ask for the BPM. Uh, then she says, he's doing good. Still took the same, still looks the same, just older. It's been 15 years since I've seen him. Is Nicole getting big? Our next appointment is June 11th for an ultrasound. And then they say, okay, now 
You see how I feel when I get this technology shit, super cheese, LOL. Hey, my sweetness, hope you're having an amazing day. We're on your way to get some raw food, yummy. Okay, I don't care to read any more of this. Um, oh yeah, I gotta read this last part. Like, this is just, this is so annoying because it's like, why are you posting all of this conversation? So now, they say these messages and then here comes daddy. Daddy says, remember today, this is Uncle Sid. If you don't change your immature ways, you're gonna lose, my man. We can be mad. We can't be mad at you, but we're definitely sad for you. How do you go from putting your mother on hold when generations of family are able to see Sinai on the cold side, but you gave no instructions to Tuffy or your mother as to when they would or could be able to see Sinai until after Tuffy brought it, brought this fact to your attention. Interestingly, you're a man now, but you were a little boy just as days go, just days ago as you needed me to walk you through getting a car, the items for the baby you wouldn't even have if your mother, Tuffy and I didn't care enough to do that for you and Sinai. You need to be rescued from your apartment weeks ago, but Tuffy, by Tuffy, but you cussed her out days ago. What's wrong? Get these people off my damn screen, child. Okay, so that's... <laughs> So that's what Sydney had to say. So basically they've kept these DMs and messages. And so he comes back, you know, once again, speaking for Monique as opposed to Monique speaking for herself. And I just feel like at this point, it's a bit much, you know, um, certain things don't need to be on social media, right? Especially when it comes to like family business, family issues. But I didn't like the fact that she saved these receipts and she wanted to post them. It's one thing, right, when you're posting stuff because you're into it with, you know, somebody outside your family, a random, you know, celebrity or just whatever, and you're showing receipts like, look, I was in the right. Look, this bitch is a fucking documented liar. Things like that. But to sit there and post stuff, conversations with your children, and it's, it's just silly. And it's not even like, I don't see where he was saying anything disrespectful in the back and forth with her. And maybe, you know, there was more things and she's just saying, you know, you keep playing with me, I'm going to show everything. So I just thought it was just really, really corny. So basically, Shalon has responded back. He responded back twice. So we're going to watch his videos. I may not play the whole thing. But he responded back after they did their live stream to him. And then he responded back to the receipts. So we're going to watch both of those. So give me just a second here to share this tab over here. Okay. Oh, does this not want to play? Let me, hold on, let me refresh it and see if it plays. All right, so I'm just going to get straight to it. Hi, I'm Shalon. <laughs> so, I find it unique that my video was in response to my mother and not her husband, but yet he still had the most to say, which isn't uncommon. I also find it unfortunate that my mother does not seem to speak on her own. The only two worlds that I know where daddy is used is for children speaking with their fathers and women acknowledging their pimps. Her husband starts off by literally doing the very thing that I said that they would do, which honestly kind of made me feel as though their response was ironic because they validate my original video. Either A, she has some newfound moment of clarity, or B, she retreats back to daddy. In her retreat back to him, though, he does not acknowledge what I did say, but instead begins to create a new narrative of things that I did not say, which negates the effects of a response video. The two of you essentially created a new video rather than actually respond to what was actually said. You also brought up my father. My father, though, is not doing interviews talking about me. In quick regards to the three sons comment, under the context in which your husband was speaking, by your rationale, ma, he should have easily had no problem saying four sons, especially since you say he knew me before I knew me. The two of you can sometimes <clears throat> come off as seekers of weak levels of empathy from others while at the same time sidestepping any accountability that one may need to take to attempt to address what I said to another man while also trying to make your wife victim number one has nothing to do with <laughs> you. My father did not need you to speak for him. 
You're her daddy, not his. My mother has been speaking on our relationship for years. So to imply that only one side of a story was told when there are several articles and interviews throughout the internet discussing my strained relationship with her filled with quotes from your wife speaking directly about me while also providing vague context and downplaying the impact of an uninterested mother. I am 33 years old and have had ample opportunity to go to the media and tell some BS story for a BS amount of money, but instead I am on TikTok expressing my feelings for free. If the two of them were paying attention, I literally explain in my first video why I am responding using TikTok and I should not have to repeat myself. My mother also states, there are some people that are saying, oh, you should be ashamed of your mothering skills. You should be ashamed of yourself. This is what I say. Let's let it play out. Because the same ones that were saying, oh, I was crazy. I was deranged. We watched it play out. So just like with my son, we're gonna watch this play out. First of all, who the hell is we if it ain't you and I reconciling our relationship? Our relationship. Second of all, it's power in a word. Nobody is playing, but I can understand why you would use that word specifically. As you stated in the Club Shay Shay interview, you had the mentality of a 15-year-old child. You required a man to raise you, and you were acting like a little girl. These are your words. It doesn't matter what context I have them in. This is how you thought of yourself as a grown adult who was someone's mother. Last time I checked, Monique fans, a 15-year-old grown adult who acts like a child but is in search of their daddy, they don't typically make efficient parents. But hey, I could be wrong. On a more serious note, to sit there and allow your daddy to address my mental health and a weak attempt to pass my response off as a moment is disturbing and insulting to those of us who do have mental health issues. The way I presented myself was no different than my mother and her daddy presented themselves when addressing D.L. Hughley. And her precious sweet babies ate it up. D.L. is wrong because he's so loud. Mo and daddy are right because they're so calm. But I, for some reason, don't get the same energy. To simply try to call me... Mm, he's saying some truth. I think him and D.L. be low-key talking. I, I think that they're low key cool because DL knew too much tea when he was talking about, you know, have you seen your grandbaby? DL knew way too much tea. Y'all stop calling that boy sassy. He got a whole baby. He got a, I think he's engaged. Um, He's just very articulate. He likes to write down his thoughts. He's very, very articulate. I know y'all are used to hood boogers who can't string together two words, who don't know how to speak properly, who yo, 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 yo. Um, He's not zesty. He's very articulate, okay? me crazy is dismissive and cowardice attacking somebody's mental status is a clear sign that you have zero to stand on furthermore what kind of person still has a text message from their wife's son that is over two years old still in their phone saved just for the purpose of re-showing it to him what i specifically remember about that message is that at the end of it you said something along the lines of if you don't respond i understand i could care less about what your message was about but for you to for you to to say in the message, if you don't respond, I understand. Why was it then that when you and I did speak after that message was sent, the first question out of your mouth is, hey man, how come you didn't respond to my text message? I found that to be very unique. But I did not need an explanation on how to speak to women or how to listen to women. That was not what that situation was about. My mother showed me how conceited she is in that situation that you were referring to. For a woman to villainize the actions of her son for being a man and a father to his new family simply because she had not heard from him in two days as though her phone was broken and she could not check on me. Cause last time I checked, I was a new parent. I didn't get a new house. I didn't go on vacation. I didn't just get a new game system. I had a baby. And in those two days that you did not hear from me, that you did not hear from me, I was handling my business as a man and a father. But I'll assume your phone and the phones of those around you were all broken, which why, which I wanted to believe was the reason why you did not respond to a message from your son expressing his concern over some bumps that your grandchild had on her back. You would later make it your business to tell me that you got the message and chose not to respond spawn because her other grandmother is a nurse damn the fact that she is also your blood and shout out to nana my baby girl loves her some nana the statement about money and then stating don't let nobody introduce me to you is not a competent statement to make because it wasn't a complete sentence nor did the two things correlate with each other and when did you have the time to introduce yourself to a son that you weren't interested in and didn't do the best job you could do i'm starting to think that you're not hearing yourself to address money you gave me you did you gave 
Okay, we're not going to listen to the whole thing because he literally goes on for like another five minutes. So I want you guys to listen to the second um, video that he has as well. So give me just a second to pull that up because he has quite a few videos, child. But I mean, again, he's definitely speaking his truth. You know, he definitely feels a way about the whole situation and his mother and how, she, how he's been treated. So let me share this tab here. Hi, I'm Shalon. I'm going to jump right into it. I guess the intelligent thing to do when assuming that your son is having a mental episode is to post personal screenshots of text messages that are three years old in an attempt to validate a false narrative as if they are some type of receipt. You also invaded the privacy of my daughter's grandparents by posting your receipts. Neither of you should never speak on mental health again if you thought that that idea was a good one. As a person who lives with mental health issues, let me be the first to educate you that there are individuals who have taken their lives, harmed, and also taken the lives of others for doing the very thing that you so proudly did and your fan base pats you on the back for, which is very telling to how strangers will buy into your toxicity. Picking up the phone to check on your son that you believe is having a mental episode to make sure that he is okay, while also making sure that your granddaughter is safe, is too much to ask, I guess. For those wondering, I have gone to therapy on several different occasions, and that is not something that I will ever be ashamed of. I have even gone to therapy with my mother on several occasions. But for those who know how efficient therapy works, therapy only works when both people are being open. My mother was still in her 15-year-old mentality phase during that time, so I guess I understand why she did not know how to be open with me during our sessions. When a person becomes accustomed to being a victim and others get used to seeing them as one, they live their lives in a state of internalization, meaning you consistently receive another's approach as an attack. Constantly putting, excuse me, constantly putting you under the illusion that you need to always be on the defense even in situations where there is no actual attack, just an acknowledgement of things already said by you. One should not feel attacked by an acknowledgement of the words that they stand on. You eventually become a passive aggressor. To address the men that had something to say in regards to men don't do what I'm doing, let me be very clear. How I man is none of your business. Mm. What and how Tell I feed them. my family has no place on your plate. For every person that stated I should not have come to the internet, I would just like to ask, what do Club Shay Shay, the articles about my mother and I's relationship, the interviews about our relationship, and Instagram all have in common? Well, if you are competent, the internet. Furthermore, I did not expose my mother, nor did I badmouth my mother. I simply provided context to what was already being said about me, while also explaining why I don't speak to them directly. <clears throat> the reason those that feel negatively about what I said are just having a hard time differentiating between Nikki Parker and Monique. Please stop with the cornball idea that a celebrity can talk about a family member on the internet for years, but God forbid said family member says any one thing and you all are outside with tiki torches and pitchforks defending not the actual person, but the idea of a person. These people are in an industry that is efficient at making money off of what is pretend. So in essence, you are defending a character. I love my mother. Man. Whoo! We're not going to listen to it all. I need to get back on my screen. Whoo! All right, Shalone. He said a lot. He said a mouthful. But um, he's right because, honestly, I never knew who he was. I never, you know, went searching for him. I knew that Monique had a strained relationship with her child, because I remember her talking about it, I don't know, on CNN or something like that, that that was part of the reason why she didn't want to go to the Cannes Film Festival to promote um, Precious, because she said while she was chasing her Hollywood dreams and trying to be Nikki Parker and, you know, her comedy dreams, she wasn't able to be a good mother to her oldest child. And because she didn't want to repeat that cycle, that's why she didn't want to go and promote Precious. She wanted to spend family time with her youngest children, the twins. So I remember her talking about the oldest, but I never like went to go research, you know, Monique's son or who, you know, 
who he was. I, and I just left it alone. Like, okay, it's family business. But when she brought it up on Club Shay Shay, when Shannon Sharp was asking her about her son and she brought it up again. I, and I was even thinking then, like, you know, I wonder what her son does or who he is. But I didn't think to, you know, to go search. But of course, you know, the internet's going internet, honey, especially this generation. Um, so they went searching for him. And they were questioning him, you know, your mom talked about you on Club Shay Shay. Why don't you guys get along? What's going on with y'all? And that is when he decided to come out and speak. So he's not lying about that. She's been talking about him and their fractured relationship for a long time. Like I said, she's been very honest about that because a lot of people wouldn't even be honest. They act like, oh, well, nothing was ever wrong. I tried my best. And at least she's honest in acknowledging that she wasn't the best mother because she was chasing fame. She was, you know, trying to build her brand and things like that. And again, it's not to knock her because regular people do the same thing. You know, it's no different than a mother having to go to school and, you know, spend a lot of time studying because she's trying to be a nurse. And then you're working 12 hour days and, you know, certain jobs do keep you from your children. It's no different than a parent joining the Air Force or the, or the military. And, you know, you spend a lot of time away from your children to sacrifice and, and um, give yourself to this country. So I, I can definitely sympathize. It's not easy, but there's definitely some brokenness within him and within Monique. And um, I just really hope that they end up healing this because life is too short. And I've seen him with his daughter, Monique's granddaughter. She's adorable. You know, he seems like a really good father. He's dealing with mental health issues as a lot of people are. You know, um, I think I was initially calling him Gen Z because that's what they were saying in the shade room. But, you know, per his age, he's a millennial, right? So. He's going through things, but he's very articulate. He likes to write down his thoughts. And sometimes people who deal with like bipolar or like mental health issues, it's easier for them to write things out and then speak on it or read it because they don't, because their thoughts get jumbled when they just have to do things off the cuff. Now, one thing I will say though, because um, I listened to the whole video, he does say something about his TikTok followers growing. Like, oh, I went from only having like 20 people here to now, I think he's at like, I don't know, 20,000 or something like that. And so he was like, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the follows. So, you know, at that point, I got to keep it real, side eye, you know, like he's definitely, I, I got to be fair. He's definitely loving the newfound attention, okay? We're going to see him two months from now. He going to be, that beard going to have Beijing in it. He going to be, you know, he ain't going to be looking at scruff. Oh, he gonna be cleaned up. Give him about two to three months. Oh, you're not gonna be able to tell him shit. He about to dye his hair crisp black, get a lineup of fade, whiten his teeth. He gonna put on some chapstick. <laughs> oh, he about to spruce himself up, bitch. Y'all done gave him a platform and some followers. Oh, he gonna be Shalom, man. <laughs> Cause when he said that, I said, okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> You're not going to let this moment go to waste and just go back into obscurity. Oh, yeah, he going to clean up them, them damn country bumpkin flannels. They're going in the trash. <laughs> he going to be out here in button-ups looking clean and shit. You ain't going to be able to tell Shalon shit, honey. Give him another two months. Let him get his little money up from TikTok. You know, these are nice little views for him. Let him get, the, let him get that first TikTok check. Oh, he going to clean up his whole persona, honey. Yeah, I remember when Keith, when Keith Lee first started, he had them struggle-ass videos with them, you know, he had the little braids, he looked it all dusty, the wife looked it dusty, no shade, but you know, that's just how it is when you first come on social media, right? I tell, I looked it dusty when I first came on social media, you know, I, be, I used to be in my bed, oh my gosh, oh, I will never forget this. <laughs> I remember a long time ago, I did a video that went viral, did not know it was gonna, you know, go, you know, pretty viral. And I'm in bed. I'm wearing like this fucking Minnesota Vikings shirt. I have on like a, a damn do-rag. I just looked a hot mess. And I'm like giving commentary like, that's messed up. They jumped that girl. Da -da -da -da. I think nothing of it. Post it. Go to bed. Child, that shit. I think everybody in Charlotte saw that video. Like, are you the girl from the, that was doing commentary on the salon beatdown? And I'm like, oh my God. And I looked at a hot mess. So I'm, I'm not throwing no shade. Like, that's just how it is. Because you don't know... You don't think people are actually watching. You're just trying to give your commentary. And so now when I see Keith Lee, honey, I've seen a video most recently. Oh, the wife be dot up. Oh, makeup be done. Hair be done. I said, okay, that money coming in, honey. 
Uh-huh. They don't be playing that. So give, give Shalon two, three months. <laughs> Y'all gonna be calling him zaddy in a minute. <laughs> Y'all been calling him uh, uh, sassy and zesty. Y'all gonna be calling him zaddy, honey. But, you know, he seems like a, a really good guy. I just hope that, you know, Real Talk, him and Monique, they get into a better space. But I think, um, like I tell you guys all the time, parenting does not come with a handbook. You know, and unfortunately, the oldest child is kind of like the quote unquote, the test, you know, cause you don't know what you're doing. You know, you have no idea and you're trying to figure stuff out. And sometimes you might be too strict on the oldest or too loose where you kind of let them do whatever. And then by the time you have like your second, third and fourth, you're exhausted. You know, that's why the youngest are always spoiled. They kind of do whatever they want. They don't have the same lifestyle as the oldest. That's just what it is. You know, I was the oldest in my family too. And the way I was raised and, and, and you know, I didn't get a lot of benefits. Wasn't, they didn't have no money to take me to no damn swim classes. That's why I can't swim to this day. But my little sister, she can swim like a fish. Because by the time she came along, they had money. So she got the perks of, you know, um, you know, dressing nice to school and, you know, taking swimming lessons. All of those other kids, can't none of us swim. Only she can swim. I mean, granted, I'm old enough now to, like, you know, teach myself how to swim, but I ain't got time. You know what I'm saying? I don't even be around nobody pool or lake, none of that shit. I do have swimsuits. I will, you know, dip my toe in that bitch. But I'm not going in there. Not, no, absolutely not. So it's just funny. It's like, as, you're, you know, as you grow up and you have kids, you, you see that. You know, you see that dynamic. So I just hope her and her son are able to get back on track. But it has to be a relationship with her and her son. You know what I'm saying? Like, Sydney can't come first. Sydney cannot, you know, be a part of the conversation. It needs to be between mother and child. And I think that's really what he wants. He wants a relationship with his mother, with his siblings, you know? So if whenever you guys get a chance, you guys can go watch his full 10 minute video on each, you know, topic. Um, he's very articulate. I enjoy listening to him. Like I enjoy listening to a, like a good speaker, you know, like he really be like preaching some words like, okay, all right. You know, so I don't find him to be zesty or sassy at all. I just feel he's a grown man. He's articulate and whoever raised him, he definitely wasn't raised in Baltimore. <laughs> he ain't talking about no U's and twos and all that. I mean, he was raised somewhere else. And, you know, whoever had a hand in raising him, because it wasn't Monique, uh, they did a good job. You know, he seemed like a like a decent person. So I just wish them the best. I wish them the best. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.